Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hartford County Health Department's Crock-Pot Throwdown. We are so excited to have each and every one of you here. I know that a lot of you were able to meet us virtually, and we are so excited about that. So you have to forgive me for how I'm standing, but if you can see if everybody behind me can kind of wave. We've got a great audience here today. So we wanna welcome each one of you and thank each one of you for joining us today. Again, we are very concerned about the health and wealth of our community here in Hartford County. And we are here with Chef Catherine Brown, which you will see her in a few minutes. We just wanted to make a few announcements before we got started. First, again, this is a two hour presentation where our participants will be able to ask questions from Dr. Um, Chef Catherine Brown. And you will be able to ask questions via the chat. So make sure that you tune in to the very end because if you do, we have a cahoots game that we're going to play, which those that are attending virtually and have signed up and registered, we promise you that if we see your name on there, that you will get a crock pot as well. You can also let us know near the end that you participated until the end as well. It is Black History Month and including that cahoots, we have a really special question for you all to answer. Um, again, Thank you for joining us and we are going to get started in just a minute. Thank you, hang out with us. While we're waiting for Chef Brown to um, finish her setup, you can see her over there. I want to thank one of our community partners, and I, I know I'm going to put her on the spot right now, and she already knows who that is. It is Joyce Glassby. Joyce Glassby is amazing. Look, this is her right here. They, she is with The Chosen. And if you don't know where The Chosen is, could you give them a little information about The Chosen? All right. Uh, good morning. Or, yeah, good morning, everyone. So glad to be here with the Hartford Health Department. So Chosen Community Development Corporation, we are affiliated with Mount Zion Baptist Church, which is in Aberdeen, um, Maryland. And so uh, over the past year, almost two years, we've been working with um, the community, trying to provide support. Um, we've had vaccine clinics. We do a monthly food distribution on the first Saturday of the month at Mount Zion in Aberdeen. And so we'll be hosting a Women's History Month program on March the 18th. So we just have so many things that we're doing to try to reach out to the um, community to help with um, mental and physical well-being. So please um, look us up at www.chosencdc.org and just see what we have going on. Thank you, glad to be here. Thank you so much, Joyce. And I also wanna mention, they have been excellent community partners and they have donated some of our crock pots that you see behind me today. And um, just in the community in general, and they got a lot of people to sign up for today. So we are so thankful for their, their um, continued support. And also, yes, Joyce, thank you. Also, in the month of March, we know that it is Women's History Month. So the Hartford County Health Department will have experts out as far as um, for minority health, we will be discussing um, what it's like to have experiences in the hospital as women of color. We will also be talking about pain management and the importance of self-care. So you wanna stay tuned for those particular um, bi-weekly broadcasts um, let's talk about it lives. Um, we're very um, excited about that. Um, we have some special guests coming. And if you would like to join us live as a guest, just to lend your voice to the discussion, we would love to have you. So just make sure that you put your information or DM us um, through the Hartford County Health Department. Um, Michelle and I's phone number 
is on the Facebook webpage. So therefore you can find us. Um, I don't have any other announcements to give at this time. I think that Chef Brown is ready and I'm going to turn it over to her with a few questions. Here she is. <laughs> So, hold on. Thank you, Chef Captain Brown. I know that you're prepping, but I'm sure that people can hear us from there. Michelle, can you hear us and see us on Facebook? Okay. So, we just want you to just give us a brief um, introduction about who you are, what you do, and um, I have a couple of those accolades that you have gotten recently, but just share with our listening audience who you are and what you do out in the community. Okay, first I would like to say good morning to all those who are watching virtually and those who are here that are present. Um, yes, my name is um, Chef Kathleen Brown, and who am I? I don't know. <laughs> okay. And the reason why I say that, I labeled myself as a wellness strategist because I have taken on the journey of working for individuals, people, your health, because it's important. And just to give a brief of my background and what led me to be here so you can understand my passion. Um, I have four children. After my fourth child, my GYN at that time stated, what's going on with you? Because I literally gained 70 pounds for every birth that I gave. And I was retaining. I owned a beauty salon working in the beauty salon and that beauty salon life all you do is eat stand and do hair no breaks no life so once she identified that i took a self-check on myself and at that point i actually began my journey in exercising and taking care of my health um if anything that you walk away today from this besides the cooking aspect because we all love to eat we might not love to cook but we love to eat but to know that it's important to take care of your health because your health can become a problem of someone else. It can shorten the life expectancy to be here with your loved ones. And we have self-control over that. So I began my exercise journey, became very passionate, did a lot of research to find out that us as African-Americans were number one with all the chronic underlying health issues. Um, looking at our diet and how we prepare food is what made me say, no more no more i made that difference in meaning i went cold turkey a vegetarian i got up every morning my mother used to scream at me get in the car stop it could be 30 degrees outside i jog if anybody know anything about south baltimore where agnes from saint agnes hospital is at i jog from saint agnes hospital out to glen bernie at the mva every day i worked night shift i was going to college but i came home and i made time for me and I came down from 160 pounds to 138 pounds. Oprah was my idol at that time and Bob Green. I decided to go and become a personal trainer. And once again, from me making a transformation, a lot of African-American women would stop me and say, I want to look like you. What are you doing? I made a change in my diet and I began to start taking care of myself. My children looked at me and was like, mommy, because I didn't change their dietary plan. I changed mine. And they said, why are you eating like this and you're not sharing it? So my kids began that McDonald's was a treat for them. Mm -hmm. Only if they had good grades on the weekends that they were allowed to go to McDonald's. McDonald's or fast food wasn't allowed in my household. I went vegetarian. I was very creative with all of the vegetables. The only meat, eventually, I decided to go back and start eating um, fish and protein, which was chicken. Because being in the gym, I was exercise, exercise, I was losing but I wasn't looking like who I wanted to look like. I was losing a lot of muscle because of the sacrifice of what I made in my diet and the overwhelming training that I was taking myself through. So I began to eat some protein and change my routine. I um, saw a female in the gym and I was like, wow, I wanna look like her. So we always have someone that we look at and we idle and we say, we wanna look like them, but what are we doing to get there? I made that change and from there, um, I came in the career of, and I was working in the hospital. I was a cardiac tech, 
I was in the process of going to school to be a nurse. And I saw those nurses sitting in there, those students come in there and saying, I can't wait for my six months is up. I'm going agency. I can't stand this job. And I took a self check because I was that individual that's sitting behind that monitor. You ever seen that monitor when you get hooked up with those electrodes and go beep, beep, beep? I was the one that was reading those lines and notifying the physicians and the nurses if you were going into VTAC, if you had any type of arrhythmia. And the doctors came to me before they went to the nurses because I was very anal. I didn't want to know what the lines were going on in there. I wanted to know what was going on in the heart so I can understand why those lines were doing that. So the doctors respect, I had a lot of respect at GBMC. So going into um, my clinical, I sat one day behind the monitors and I says, okay, you gotta deal with the patients. You have the family member, you have the auxiliary staff, you had the physician, uh, nope. So I decided to go into health and wellness. Um, Valley Total Fitness identified me, brought me in, Less than six months, I became a manager for Valley Total Fitness. Then I became the assistant regional manager for the Baltimore market. After seven, I was the only female and the first African-American female. After seven years of long working and being moved around the Beltway, I journeyed out and started my own business. I asked my co um, colleagues, do you think I can survive? They said, you, yes. So at that point in time, my clients love me. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a crazy out of box trainer, okay? So my clients love me and they sat in my office and they always say, if we ain't like you, it would be easy to lose weight. So what happened is I started cooking for my clients. I had the opportunity to go to California. I met Jillian Michaels and they gave us a course on how to become a personal fitness chef. And that was my journey into culinary. Um, I came back, I had clients that were going out to LA to audition for the VO. I've trained um, and cooked for Radio personnel from Radio One. Um, I had was awarded to have the opportunity to um, cook for our belated Tom Clancy. So my culinary just went on, and Tom Clancy was my challenge. At that time, I decided, okay, I need to go back to culinary school. So I went to L'Academy de Cuisine down in Bethesda, and they told me, you don't need to come back. You just need the sous chef. So I have always continuously had an interest and passion about nutrition because we have hundreds of diets out there and we don't know the answer to why we just want that quick ratification of losing weight feeling better but do you obtain that as part of a lifestyle no we do it to, even the bariatric i had the opportunity to work with sinai hospital the nutritionists and the physicians for people that do pre and post bariatric care um i've had clients that came to me because they would refer their patients to me that came to me and put that weight back on and go back surgery the second time why do you want your body to be constantly be cut okay why do you want to do that when all it takes is discipline changing your mindset think about what i say is we have a garden inside internally it's a garden in there. You have your heart, you have your stomach, you have your kidneys, your liver, all those little organs, they need to be nurtured and they need to be nurtured with the right food. So that has been my journey. Um, I've been to culinary school. You might say, why do you keep going to culinary school? Because no matter who's your instructor, I've had instructors that have been on yachts, that have been overseas and traveled and I'm getting ready to start traveling. Hopefully I'll go to Argentina and um, sous chef under a couple of chefs over there. Because I, what I would like to do, my ultimate goal is to go to other countries, learn how they eat, especially the Mediterranean, because they eat fresh, okay? Their seasonings and everything, and bring it back here, because we are not offered, even though we have the Italians, the Latinos, um, what else, the French restaurants, the Asians, it's not prepared the same as it is in their country. I would like to love to have the opportunity to be able to come back and bring it and teach you how to be in your home and have those same dishes because that statement about eating healthy is expensive. It's not. I'm here to tell you it's not. You can have basic staples in your house as carrots, onions, um, green beans, broccoli, and um, whatever vegetables, sweet potatoes, and you can make various dishes. All it is is in the flavors that you add, the spices and your herbs that you add to it, um, and giving that different type of texture and taste. So what I'm gonna be preparing today, because 
I can go on and on and on about nutrition <laughs> and fitness because I just love it. I'm always studying it. It's a science. It is a science. Every one of us in here have a different heartbeat. We can be in the same age parameter, but our heart is our heartbeat is so different. Okay. So we are unique in a way, but yet we have the same organs that's supposed to function the same way. And all it is is make sure that you take care of that garden because you are a vehicle. And I'm going to show you today how to do something unique with a dish. We're going to do a sweet potato chili. Okay. Who would have ever thought about using sweet potatoes to make chili? Because no, we just do the basics. And just remember, the recipe is your guide. It's your roadmap. Okay, but you can take that recipe and you can recreate it and do whatever you want. You can add, you can even take my recipe. If it's something that you want to omit from it, you can take it out. If it's something you want to add, you can add, be creative. The flavoring, my flavoring, I don't um, put a lot of, you know, some people say, that food too bland. That's that. But you know why? Because I have to cater to a wide array. Everybody's palate is different. I cook from the heart and I cook for your health. So, we had some sweet potato chili side um, for you to sample, as well as I did uh, Italian chicken stew. And I hope that you um, enjoy it. And whenever Felicia is ready to open it up for you to sample, um, I did go ahead and do prepare my mise en place because this is how technically when we're in the kitchen that we should cook. We should gather all of our items for that dish instead of running to the cabinet. Well, you might see me running a little bit because my workspace is limited, but all of your items should be prepared. So I'm gonna just go over a couple of um, basic kitchen edits, if y'all don't mind, and if you wanna learn. The first thing is your knife is your best friend. When we go to the market and we purchase those things that are pre-cut, it costs more money, okay? Mm -hmm. Get those items whole, that whole carrot, spend time in the kitchen, it's your relaxation time. You're making love to yourself through food and preparation. So the knife is your um, your best friend. Keep your knife and your blade sharpened, which you can use every time before and after you cook, you should hone your knife. Dry it off. It shouldn't go into the dishwasher. Your cutting board. Your cutting board should always be secured with either a damp cloth, um, a dish cloth, or as you see, I have a mesh because if you're here and you're putting down a lot of pressure and your cutting board goes to slide away from you, so you want to secure it. You want to have your cutting board pulled towards the edge of you. And cleansing your cutting board, wash it off with hot soapy water, let it air dry, do not put it in the dishwasher. Okay, now when you're cutting up your vegetables, regardless what type of technique you're using and preparing them, you want to kind of make sure, especially when you're roasting them, you want to try to make sure that they're close as possible, the same shape and distance. So I might be off a little because they cook different. So the thicker they are, the longer. And if you have one in here that might, let me see if I have one. That's, okay. A little bit smaller. So you see it's I have one that's thick. This is going to take longer in time for preparation versus this is going to cook real quick. So you want to try to make sure that your vegetables are evenly cut. Um, my garlic. So I minced the garlic, and then what you saw me do, I paste it. All you have to do, we might go to the market and buy garlic paste. It's costing more money because why? Somebody else had to paste that garlic. So if you mince it, all you want to do is take a little bit of salt. The salt pulls the moisture. That's what salt, the purpose of salt. We think it's for flavor, but salt pulls the moisture out of it. Even when you're putting it on your meats, it's bringing the moisture up in it. So I placed some salt on it, rubbed it in real good, and then I took the knife and I pressed down. So it's a push and pull. And I'll do one real quickly so we can get into the cooking process. Any, I think that I would wait to um, serve the food. Okay, no problem. The other thing is, too, we waste a lot. Every single thing that you use in the kitchen some way can be repurposed. So if I was at home or working, all of these items, I would save and bag it up and put it in the freezer. Make your own stock. 
The stock we purchase in the market has a lot of preservatives in it and high in sodium. So just take that time. Some of us might say we have busy schedule. One day a week, utilize that time of being in the kitchen and preparing your meals. Okay, so I'm going in here and I'm gonna mess it up real good. And I'll put some salt on it. Felicia. Felicia. Can you help me? Yes. I got a walk. No. And along the way, if anyone has any questions to ask Chef Brown, whether you're online or that you're in person, you can ask her. We can still hear you. Yes. Sure. Okay. So I went in and I messed it up real good. So I'm going to push down with some pressure and pull back. So I had to do an event, and it was a big event. And my cousin is a chef for over 25 years. We have a lot of chefs in my family. So she was like, no, oh, you're not going to sit here and paste that. Get the garlic press. I don't like the garlic press. Because the garlic press, you waste some garlic in there as well. I mean, it's time consuming. But the other thing is, do not take your blade and swipe it across the cutting board. Take the back of the blade, scoop it up. There's my pace. Okay. And the reason why, because the blade, regardless if it's plastic or it's wood, mm -hmm. you're digging into these particles mm -hmm. and you're consuming this in your food. Okay. Mm -hmm. And why I'm on that, because I have another fat piece. I have to do, I work for a company and I have to do inspections and they don't like when I come. Okay. So, if and I wherever I go at, and a lot of people say, Oh, your pots and pans, the kitchen actually is the beginning of your health. And the reason why I say that, because no matter how the kitchen looks like it's tidy, it's a lot of bacteria and germs in there that the eyes cannot see. So you should always keep your kitchen sanitized. Then you have your pots and pans, okay, your cookware. If you have any cookware at home that's rusted any kind of way, it need to go out. And I see a lot of this when I go to visitations because you know why? That's contamination. And that's toxic because you are every time, even with a Teflon pan, and I haven't had this pan since 2009, okay, when I started. Even with the Teflon, if you're using the wrong co uh, cooking utensils and your that pan is abrasive, Every time you put something in there, you're putting that Teflon into your food and you're consuming it. And that impacts our health. It has a lot to do, you know, besides the food that we eat. And if you, you know, are not processing it out, eliminating it, it's sitting in you. It's toxic. It's feeding those cells in your body. Okay. Um, okay. She wants to know how do you sharpen your knife? Okay, I'm going to sharpen it. <laughs> so it's two ways that you can sharpen it. You can actually, I have a um, a stone that I sharpen it with a stone, and that's really if it's real dull, or you use your home. And you want to keep it on a 45, you don't want it to be flat. You want a 45 degree angle, and you want to take it and glide that blade straight across it. And then you go. Okay, and then you cleanse it off. But you don't have to oil it down and stuff like that. No. Mm -hmm. you, ask, you don't have to boil it down. No. Or oil, or mm -mm. oil no. It down. You don't have to oil it down. Okay. And it um it's really no reason that you should have to oil it down, but once again. Um, I'm going to say it depends on the material that the blade is made out of. We have a question from um, Facebook Live. They're asking, 
what's the best cookware to use for health purposes? For health purposes? <laughs> what's the best type of cookware? Um, you can use ceramic as well as cast iron. Cast iron is actually a good one to, to um, use as well too, but you have to keep it seasoned. Okay, but because it's a cast iron, it has health properties that when you use it, it's cooking into your food, the iron from the pan, so that helps out. And um, once again, you want to keep this pan nice and seasoned. You shouldn't be using it and then letting it dry in the water and it get rust. So you want to season it real good, place it in the oven, let it um, bake a little, bring it out, let it come down to temperature, but it should always be seasoned. The same thing with your wax. Your wax you should not be putting in soap and water and clean, cleansing it. Okay, so, um, okay, let me clean my... I did not know that thing. What? About that last comment that you made. About, about the walk? Yeah. Yeah, no. Are there any other questions? Um, so how far do you feel it? Like, I know you just keep it clean, but what else do you make? You can say the same thing here. I'm sorry. So the cast iron skillet, like, I know people will make food and then, like, you don't really take that out. But so how do you go about it? Like, it. Like you just not? Wait a minute, you, are you speaking of the wok? Of the cast iron skillet. The, no, you're still going to cleanse it, okay, but then you let it, you dry it, and then if you dry it, you want to season it. And you might not have to season it every time after every use it. So, like, what would you put on it? See, a lot of people don't know what seasoning is. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, you can put some oil, like some vegetable oil. And um, just put it on there real lightly, so you're not doing it real heavy or anything. But you just take like a paper towel and lightly just rub it around it. Okay. Yeah, and stick it in the oven. So does that stay on there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, and the other thing, so like when I did my sweet potato, you know, I had to cut off the edges that are, aren't even, but I still can use this. I can puree this and make a sweet potato uh, puree. I can even cut it up and use it in a, um, in a soup. So when we have all these, what we say, you know, roughish that we want to throw away, even the um, carrot skin, that's where your nutrition is at, your nutrient value is, yeah. right there in that skin. Yeah. So you can use that um, in different dishes. You can do puree with it as well, too. Uh, so, um, we have another question. Okay. When you uh, put the oil on the Mm -hmm. How long do you leave it in the oven? Not, it doesn't have to stay that long. I'd probably say like maybe 10, 15 minutes. Okay. No, not on I eat on the oven. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to get to um, start cooking here. And I think I'm going to start with the chili. And it's very simple and basic. So we're going to prep the ground beef. And you might say, okay, if we use in a crock pot, if we're using a crock pot, why do we have to prepare? Because with the crock pot, no, that's not right. Oh, I have. So with the crock pot, and the other thing is, well, too, you want to make sure if you're using, see, my cutting boards are color code, but if you know, it's not affordable for you to have multiple cutting boards, if you have just one basic cutting board, make sure that you sanitize a cutting board in between everything that you prepare, especially meat. Okay, because that's cross contamination. I have a suggestion. I have at home. Mm -hmm. Mine is white, mm -hmm. and I put nail polish on the side for my meats, and the other side I use for my veggies. Okay, so you flip. Like okay. Mm -hmm. We have another question. What about induction cookware? Is that a good brand to cook with? Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm going to, and we're going to start with this. I'm trying to maneuver some of these things out the way so I can get. You don't never, well, you shouldn't, 
start with a cold pan. You want to bring your pan up to temperature. Okay, so you want to bring your pan up to temperature before you start um, doing any type of preparation with it. And I'm using... <laughs> What's the name of the, um, the best um, cookware to use again? You can use um, cast iron, aluminum, and stainless steel. Okay. And, and I mean, um, and, and ceramic, because um, they're very durable and they last a while. Okay, so now I'm going to cook my turkey. So we get ready to, um, you don't want them to sample it while I'm preparing it. So I'm getting ready to start this, this chili. It's very basic. Very, very basic. And it's basically the same way as preparing any other style of chili. And I love cooking with ground turkey. I don't, you know, do a lot of beef. I don't cook pork. I don't fry food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a treat. So my clients, you know, if a client hire me, I let them know I don't fry and I don't, uh, I don't cook pork. But some of my clients, I twist my arm a couple of times that I have done pork tenderloin and various dishes for them because they've been with me for a while. So it's a treat, but it's a no-no. And it's just my, my health preference for the reason why I don't do it, especially frying. Because frying breaks down the food. Um, also, I look at the oil over the duration, what we call a cumulative health, that the things from constantly eating a lot of fried food, what it does to our arteries. And when you, every time you go to the doctors, what are the two things that they tell you you need to do? Okay, lose weight and eat better. But what's the other one besides lose weight? Exercise. And that's actually your two good forms of medication. Because who wants to be on pills if you can have control of not being on any type of medication? This is preparing. I am going to show you how quick and this is in the process of just having all your ingredients already prepped. I wish I had a sous chef. Anybody want to help? <laughs> <laughs> food for them to okay. taste it and then I'll come back over and help you. I have an apron. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Yes. Yeah. A sous chef is someone that assists the chef and may have some um, specific detailed duties to do in the kitchen. People are mixing that up with S O U P. No. S O U S. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have one. I have one. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is not part of this, but when I make chili, I put cocoa powder in there, a little bit of cocoa powder in there. Um, it brings out the flavor. Smoked paprika. Of course, the uh, main ingredient is the chili powder, oregano, basil, a little cilantro. Uh, okay, so here we go. We're going to put some. Hmm? I need a little spoon. This is oregano. And you just want this ground turkey to, you know, cook into its brown. It can have a little pinkish to it because it's going to go into the slow cooker, but you don't want it to go in here uh, in the slow cook, I mean, the crack pot raw. Does anybody know why a crock pot, besides convenient, the usage of it? and the benefits that it does to the food of preparation. Right, that's one of it. Same temperature. Cook evenly. Don't overcook. Don't overcook. You so all of and it do, right and it doesn't break down the fiber and cells of it because every the vegetables are a living organism they were on a root in the soil and was being nurtured okay so now they're out the soil the nutrients daily is breaking down so it's losing its nutrition value so when we go to cook it it breaks down even more so depending on the cooking process it really denurtures that vegetable. So now we're preserving it here in the crock pot. For those of you who've already tasted it, how does it taste? Delicious. Once again, if you need salt, I'm telling you, I'm not big on salt. <laughs> I do not use a lot of salt. And the thing is, you should cook with kosher salt or sea salt. It's better that way that you can not use a lot of salt so we can actually taste the flavor of the food. That's something that we're not used to doing as a culture. Right. <laughs> I got to sample this before and I, I was tasting the flavors. You can taste the food itself. Everybody pick one? Are we missing anybody? Chunks of potatoes. That's, yeah. The sweet potato. Mm -hmm. It has eye peel and then it's just a nice chunk of things. Okay, I'm going to put um, my red peppers in here. Now, I could saute these and bring out the flavor in them. And put my garlic in. They can see you guys live. Can you just kind of describe anybody um, how it tastes? They're already tasting the chili. so if you um actually this was three to four hours no but yeah because i cooked it for three hours last night and i got it this morning and let it uh cook for another Hour, 
So if we, if we had it on the low, it would be six to eight hours. It's very tasty. Yes. Um, I was in Klein's the other day. I love trying new vegetables, and I saw this so do I. squash, kabosho, kabosho, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. They said it's a Japanese pumpkin, but it has the sweet potato taste. Mm -hmm. Can you use that instead? Be creative. Be creative. Mm -hmm. um, when you go to the market and you see vegetables there and you're not, because you, in our culture, we just so limited. And I say, open up your palate, expand that palate. What I do, I love going to the international market. Okay. Mm -hmm. my grandma was so, she would sit there and say, You eat anything they put in that market, but you know what? I Google it, find out what's the nutrition value, what are the health benefits of it, and then I look for recipes. Okay. Or to try to figure out how I can incorporate it into other recipes. So the same way with this, you could take um, the sweet potato, if you want to put some carrots in here, anything from that root family, you can add in here. And like I said, a uh, recipe is a roadmap. Recreate it, make your own recipe. Tofu? Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the tofu? Yes, like instead of maybe like a, um, a meat. What you're saying is that replace it with uh -huh. the tofu, mm -hmm. and you can do that as well, too. Mm -hmm. I think the cheese adds a perfect, um, it gives it the salt that you need without having to do too much. Did, um, does they use the cheese? Okay, I'm going to drain the liquid off. Oh, this is good. Who knew? Sweet potatoes. <laughs> I want each of you to know that the recipes that are being done here are all inside your bag. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh were y'all writing down the ingredients? Yeah. <laughs> Told you. Both of them, both of the recipes that are being done today are inside your bag. Okay? Look, I'm getting ready to say we. <laughs> I know this is off a little bit. I have a glass top cooker on mm -hmm. stove, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to find the correct cookware to use on it because the cookware scratches up the surface mm -hmm. of the glass. What's your recommendation? You have me on that one. Because <laughs> I was, I want to say the Pyrex, but you don't see them around that much. Anybody else need cheese? Right here, my friends. Okay, and now we're going to add. The tomato. Do we have anyone in the audience that is diabetic? That you know of? Diabetic? Free? Pre diabetic? Um, getting there. <laughs> I'm trying to come down. That's <laughs> okay today. Yeah, <laughs> so we I have, am pre. I have to change my. Yeah, I'm okay. So these recipes, of course, what she's making would be um, very good to incorporate in your um, everyday eating for pre diabetic or pre diabetic or somebody in your family might be. And the purpose, and, and, and as you see, Chef Brown is amazing. Mm -hmm. She's very informative. Um, we have to change our mindset about eating. And it doesn't happen overnight. So just taking the information in and thinking about what we're doing and just making the process easier. Eventually, it's like, like a spinning top, like we're getting there. And then we kind of dot it on there and we're like, okay, I'm going to try this. So we're hoping that when you walk away, today that you can change your opinion about maybe sweet potatoes <laughs> and chili 
And um, that the fact that it does not have to be over seasoned and actually get the benefits and really feel full and feel um, satisfied from what you're eating. So go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> I would like to ask a question. Uh -huh. I'm from Jamaica, so everything here is a little bit different for me. The seasoning, I'm using everything is Jamaican seasoning. Right. So I do not know how some of these here, I don't use them, I don't know about them. Mm -hmm. So it would be a little different for me. Mm -hmm. But it tastes good. <laughs> Expand that palate yeah. beyond that Jamaican food. Yeah. <laughs> and again, um, I'm a cancer survivor, so um, changing all the medication I'm on and everything for it, I'm changing the diet. This is different and it's interesting. And I think one of the things she said the hardest part is doing it. Right. And if I had somebody to do it, I would eat fantastically. <laughs> okay, so now I just added some um, chickens. Well, that's chicken broth. You can use vegetable, and you can, you know, as well use beef, chicken. So the chicken that I have today that I'm getting ready to um, break it down or fabricated, mm -hmm. you could take that chicken. So this is little technique ways that you can actually want to save money if you're working on a budget. You could take that chicken and just cut it up real fine and go through it and just keep mashing it and use ground chicken and put it here as well too. Or you can do a plant base. Okay, so the ingredients, sure. With the chili now, um, I'm single, so a lot of times on Saturdays and Sundays, I'm cooking in batches and then making like single servings uh -huh. in the freezer. Could I go on and put the cooked sweet potato in there, or is that something you should wait? Would it get mushy? Would you say place after you place it in the freezer? Be, well, when I'm packing it up to put in the freezer, should the sweet potato already be in it? It can, it can be in the freezer it. for a while. It, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, it can be in there. <laughs> I mean, this mic ain't working today. Okay. Um, work on that. Well, so, oh, go ahead. Here, I got it. I got it. I got it. Well, um, Chef Brown is still prepping. Um, as far as diabetes is concerned, um, in a minute, I'm going to have Joyce Glassby explain. Um, they have some classes available, and I want her to give a listening audience that information. Just give it. Let me see. Try it in the back. Let's see if it's going to back. On my pants, it better work out. Okay, so my ingredients so far that I have placed in here the sweet potato, of course, the ground turkey, onions, red pepper, which you could, you know, replace it for the green pepper. Um, I added the garlic, onions, a little bit of um, chili powder, oregano, and tomato paste, and we are good to go. And I'm gonna put some thyme. Okay. And I'm going to place this over here so I can start cooking and we will set it for three. There's another recipe to sample. So. Three hours um, and then go back and check it for because we want to check the um, sweet potato for texture so you don't want to overcook it. Any questions before I move to the uh, next recipe? I'm going to do that. Like, I, I leave my alarm at work, and I'm at work from, like, 8 to, what time is it? 8 to, like, I'm not getting home to, like, 5.30. So I should leave that on low? Yes. Okay. And it'll shut off after the three hours that it automatically shut off. 
Okay, one of the other things that I've brought as well to to go over before I move forward is the various um, oils. So I have coconut, rice, and ghee butter. Ghee butter. Ghee butter. I'm trying to find where it's at. Ghee as in G H E E. It's in a can. Okay. I can't stop it. All right. So ghee butter is clarified butter. Okay. And all it is is that the fat has been extracted for it. It's good. It's excellent for flavor. Um, regular butter, you can cook with it, but remember, it's not for high heat temperature. Each type of um, oils or shortening has a heat temperature that is, um, you can use for preparation. This is rice, rice um, brand oil. You can use this for high, high temperature. Coconut, you can use for high temperature. Olive oil, you actually have three crusts. You have the extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. That is only for salads. Okay. Oh, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you have the virgin and then you have the parmace. The parmace is the last press. That's the last bit of the olive oil that you get out. That is what you can use for your saute or your deep frying, but not your extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. Say that again. The pomace. Yeah. Okay, avocado oil as well is good as well too. I love avocado and grapeseed. Um, and depending on like your keto and your paleo diet, some of them will omit and say, no, you can't have your grapeseed, you can't have your safflower, can't have your peanut or your um, vegetable oil. So if you decide to go on besides the fact of your keto and your paleo, it's a low carb diet. Do your research and find out why. Um, yes, it's a low carb. I think keto, you only can take in 35 grams of carbs a day. All right. That's throughout the whole duration of the day. It's not per meal. So you have to know exactly which that would be a small. And if I was working with a female and you were trying to lose weight, you would get a quarter cup automatically of any type of thing that falls in the star train. We have another okay, question. So now, now you made a correction for me. <laughs> so when I fry my chicken in my air fryer, in your air fryer, I usually mm -hmm. coat it with virgin oil. Okay. So what should I do? Okay. <laughs> now, I wouldn't do the virgin. I would go to, I mean, you're doing the virgin, that's the extra virgin. The extra virgin. No, okay. Go down low. Okay, let's go down low. Yes. Okay, so the next time we're getting ready to get into the poultry and I'm going to fabricate it. You have a question? Me too. Right before you um, get to the next recipe, I'm going to bring this over for Joyce, if you can take your mask down a minute, and give everyone the information about the diabetes class. Can they see you? Okay. Yeah, I think. Can you see? So anyway, um, Chosen Community Development Corporation, we're working with the University of Maryland, um, their uh, Healthy Hartford, and we are going to be um, providing a year-long training program um, to, for people who are currently pre-diabetic so that they can receive coaching and information um, about how to um, keep from this having this chronic disease um, become a part of their lives. So that program is going to be starting on Monday, February the 28th, and it's going to be at 7 p.m. So I have the information. You can register probably on Monday morning um, because there's still space is available. There's a um, toll-free number, 800-515-0044, and that's the number to the health link. And then you could get the information for the class that will be starting at 7 p.m. So that's going to be a year-long program in order to have a positive effect on your life. Oh, once again, the phone number is 800-515-0044. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Joyce. Okay, right back to the chef, Catherine Brown. And this, I mean, 
really utilize every source for diabetes because diabetes is not a um, it's a metabolic syndrome and it definitely has an impact on every organ in your body um, and we can prevent it we can prevent it through being pre-diabetic by having control over what you eat and just get out there and start exercising it doesn't have to be anything really intense a brisk walk um, you can gauge your walk like okay 10 steps walk at this pace 10 steps increase your pace you can say okay if you're a beginner i'm gonna walk a block today and next week, I'm going to increase it maybe a half of a block because at the same time, you want to monitor your heart. How is your heart? Is it really, you know, your heart rate getting up there? You feeling exhausted? So you want to take it in baby steps and gradually increase your exercise program, but begin to do something. Our bodies is made for us to move, be um, limber as we age and we continue to just sit around. We lose our flexibility, our range of motion. Um, we stiff, we start, our body start changing, um, bone density, muscle, all of that we lose. And we can actually change all of that by just doing some form of exercise, okay? In the house, I have a lot of people say, I don't have a gym membership. I can't afford a gym membership. Two places is the best form of having the best gym, your house and mother nature. And it doesn't cost you anything. Get a mat some dynamic equipment, like some kettlebells, not no three, two, five pound, cat, I mean, dumbbells or kettlebells. Because when we go to the market, those grocery bags are heavier than five pounds. But you can start off, you know, start off there and get that body moving. It burns calories, okay? You're burning calories. We're eating this food, we're sitting around, and it's just like we consume it. Once it gets past that throat, it goes down in that esophagus. It has a relationship with every organ in that body. The arteries of the veins, are they clogging it up? You know, we don't think about that. We look at food and we just eat because we use our five senses. Our eyes, it looks good. Our palate, it tastes good. Oh my gosh, I want some more. Okay. Our nose, we smell the aroma. It directs us right to that food. It is we walk in the house, we hear pots and pans, kitchen cooking, we're going straight to the kitchen. <laughs> so food can be that enemy, but it can be our medicine, just change. And, you know, as Alicia said earlier, take it in baby steps. So you can gradually say, okay, I'm still going to eat this, but I'm cutting back my portion size. Okay. Or I'm going to add a little bit more of this. And the next thing you know, you make the change. I've actually had clients that I didn't even, because if you're my client, you have to do a journal for me for seven days. I meet you where you at. Because if you go to a physician and they tell you don't, you can't have this, you can't have that, it's hard. It is hard. I'm here to tell you it's hard. So if you give me a seven-day journal, I can look at it. I can tell you what are you lacking as far as your micro and macro, your vitamins, because you're not eating certain food groups. If you have a weak time throughout the day that you're craving and you're just grabbing and eating a whole lot of chocolate and junk food. <laughs> Um, your diet tells a whole lot about your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I say, you give me something, I'll be in a life on you. I come back and I'll say, okay, this is where I see that you're consistently, you're eating this or you're not eating enough of that. I had one client, she drank five sodas every day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She ate at Boston Market every day. I did not touch Boston Market. The only thing when I sat down and told her we're going to work on a change was the soda. Okay, I eventually got her off the soda that when she got down, we, I started with no longer five. Well, first week was five. The next week was four. The next week was three. When I got her down to two, every other day, let's make a choice. Can it be tea? So she went to tea. She, so she started going to the point where she wasn't using tea to hit sugar. She lost 20 pounds just cutting the soda. I didn't touch Boston Market or anything else. Okay, so, you know. Find out what's the easy, identify what is your weak area, identify where you need to make the changes in your diet and make those changes there. Okay, so I'm going to go get into this chicken. And Felicia had to give me a whole chicken. <laughs> so I'm only messing with you. Okay, so. Okay, so. No, that's why I'm, I'm, it's a good thing, okay? So. So we're going to learn how to fabricate a chicken. So actually speaking, depending on um, the quantity that you, you're cook, uh, cooking for, if it's for yourself, like at home, 
this is much more cheaper to purchase than to buy the chicken wings or the chicken quarters, drumstick, okay? Because you can get eight servings out of this. And you can do eight different types of meals as well, too, if you want it single, individual pieces. And you said it costs more if you buy it uh, Correct, that's what I'm saying. So if you purchase it like this, yeah. It's cheaper. See, all things work together, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't have it with me today. Um, I just noticed I didn't have it, and I didn't bring my my um, suitcase with my all my knives in it. So what were you doing just now? I'm just loosening the joints up. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna pick this chicken up. Don't be afraid of it. And then I'm gonna go. And you, when you're getting ready to fabricate it, you're not sawing. You're just gonna glide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that. Yeah, then I'm gonna pop it. Yeah, we need one of those knives. Yeah, <laughs> so tell us the knife. Yeah, what's the knife? This is just the chef knife. That's all. Um, I you mean, you on, on you're going to find a, on your low end, like a Walmart, you'll find a decent knife, but it might not be, you know, the best of quality, but just starting at home, even those chefs, um, those knives that comes in the butcher block, so this is all you're doing, is just go in, pop that joint. Anybody has a chef? Can you just use like regular like chicken cutlets, or do you like? Should you do the whole chicken? You don't have to do the whole chicken. So like this particular uh, dish is the um, actually the drumstick. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. <laughs> that looks super easy. Mm -hmm. I need that knife for real. I know. We all need to give you money. Well, see, I usually use a boning knife. A boning. Yes, you can use. That's what you use to cut the chicken with? Mm hmm. A boning knife. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to go in here and take the back off. For those of us that um, we don't have a lot of time in the kitchen, what do you suggest for prepping? Like so, because I know cutting a whole chicken after we get off of a, um, an eight-hour shift is not something we want to do. And I know that that whole chicken is really um, beneficial and uh, less expensive. So you can, I mean, you can buy the chicken parts if you don't, you know, you don't have the time. The day before, the day before, on the weekend. Yeah, that's what I'm Oh, the weekend, okay, yeah. Now, this right here, I'm going to save it for stock. Yeah. Or you can actually use it to fix um, some soup. So while you're prepping that, so we were also, I think that when we were doing the food giveaway here, we talked about freezer bags. Yeah. yeah. And the, the produce that comes inside of the boxes are cabbage, beets, onions, carrots, celery, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. sometimes squash. Mm -hmm. I haven't had squash a lot. But sometimes um, just investing in some freezer bags so the food can go a little further. And you can see that the sweet potatoes are beneficial so you can prep it on the weekend. Sometimes we just have to take, I know it's hard because I'm there with you with that. Mm -hmm. I need a, something very quick mm -hmm. that I don't have to spend a lot of time on. But if you would all agree, our health is very important yeah. to us. And that if you got the, have those freezer bags, um, Chef Brown, I was asking you before, 
how long do certain foods be frozen in those foods, especially vegetables? It depends. Um, it can be up to six months. For like vegetables? Yes. Or... And actually the freezer bags are okay, but if you can get um, the Krylon. Krylon, spell that? Mm -hmm. And you take the Krylon and you, uh, it's extracting the air out and it preserves it longer. Spell um, Krylon for uh, 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 some of us out there. K R Y L A N. Yes. 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 Okay, so now with this chicken breast, I'm getting, I'm staying quite, keeping my blade right up close to the, the bone. And as you see, it's not um, okay. It's not a lot of meat that's wasted on it. Okay. Oh, it turned off. Okay. So now we have your tenderloin it's on the back. Now, if I wasn't preparing this well, I still can do it. Um, we have two chicken quarters, chicken wings, and your broth. Now, we go to the market and we get those nice, thick sized broths. How you can Expand your yield with the breast. Let's go in and fillet it. Okay, once again, same thing. Take the knife, lay it flat against the flesh. This one is a little slip. And depending on the thickness of the chicken breast, you can get anywhere from two to three slices out of it. Okay, and this is how you can expand your yield from one breast. Um, there was a company that I worked for. They had 10, I purchased 10 pound bags of um, chicken breast. So I go in and I teach the guys. I have like, I'm in charge of like 70 something male, male that I have to teach. So they go in and they like take the whole bag and put it in the freezer. No! <laughs> so I make them take it out and they get a certain amount and everybody have to learn how to fillet chicken breast. So they impress because when these guys go out and they go home, they don't know how to cook. Mm -hmm. So now they know how to stretch because they're living on a budget. They want subsidized income. So they have to learn how to live, live and eat on a budget. So we're teaching them how to use these chicken breasts and fillet it. As well as I could have cut this in half. I can make... Um, Chicken salad out of this. I could do saute chicken um, breast with some um, red peppers and some green peppers and some onions with some rice or some quinoa. So, you know, you can have a wide variation of dish with just basic ingredients that you don't have to go to the market and spend a whole lot of money in the market on food and delicious meals as well, too. So, we're going to clean this up because, and then we're going to get to moving with that. And I got to sanitize everything down and I need to shift because. Where am I? Where am, what am I working with time wise? We were just checking the mic. We got about um, 20 minutes. Okay, no problem because we're going to put this all in the crock pot. You have, did you have containers for? We, we want some containers. Okay, so I need the crock pot so I can move this. So, this is another real quick dish as well, too. And I need a five feet. So basically, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm just going to put all the ingredients in. Okay. So once again, this one, the only preparation um, is the chicken has to be brown. So I'm going to braise the chicken. Yeah, 
that I have another opinion. And then I'll sweep the tigers. You want to help out with that, Trace? I just need you to cut it open, split it, and then we're going to put um, this ground turkey with some um, tomatoes mixed in there, some chili powder, and some cumin. You want to put it inside the sweet potato. Okay. While Chef Brown um, announced uh, preps the chicken, I wanted to let our Facebook um, and YouTube listeners know that the facility that we're using today is at the Village at Lakeview in Edgewood, Maryland. So let's give them a hand. They are our great community partners. What we've been doing as the Minority Health Department, we wanted to partner in Edgewood and Aberdeen and in Habit of Grace. And so what better way to partner than to just go right into the community where we reside, where we live, work, and play. And so the director of the community outreach and um, events here, her name is Miss Tracy, and I want her to just come up and just introduce herself. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Tracy. I'm the resident service coordinator here at Village at Lakeview. We are located at 833 Fisherman's Lane in Edgewood. So come by, we have a computer lab, um, you can print, we have a notary, we have a women's, men's and children's um, storage space where you can come and get some clothes. We have the after school program. We do a lot here, just come check us out. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Tracy, we, we really appreciate your partnership. And um, for those of you that are looking for other activities that the health department does, there is a link on the Hartford County Health Book page that says Minority Health. And if you press that link, you can find where we're going, where we've been, and the other committees that we have for our community. Again, we've only been out here in the community working in this capacity since maybe, I guess, April of last year. And um, we've been in the community itself, I guess, since June. And so we started out in um, the Grove in Edgewood and with a family that had recently lost their son. And we went out as um, a community and ministered to that family and the health department was there. Um, we also brought down, um, her name is Katura, uh, yeah. is it? Capra Kears from New York City. Mm -hmm. They had um, a mobile mm -hmm. that dealt with gun violence and they did, um, they dealt with specific traumas, mm -hmm. with gun violence, mental health. Um, they came right into the Grove, bought their mobile, had essential oils, they gave us healthy um, cooking methods as well, as far as smoothies and things to drink. Um, we look forward to even going up there to visiting them as well, because they were phenomenal. And July, we were at the Wash and Fold in Edgewood, if you're familiar with that, where the Edgewood Creamery is, the Food Lion. And we were out there with um, Moms Demand Action, Climate Action. We had some of our council members out there and we gave out information concerning mental health. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to my next point. When we're out there and we were canvassing and needs, the biggest concern, not only was it just, okay, health insurance, food and security, so those things are, are ongoing. But post pandemic, if I can say that, um, people wanted to talk about what was going on inside their homes. They wanted to talk about their families. They wanted to talk about mental health. Um, our young people wanted to talk about um, uh, cyberbullying. Um, 
So what we're doing in, in regards to that, we've partnered with the Boys and Girls Club, um, the ones in Edgewood, Aberdeen, and Habit of Grace. And we're going to have a mental health lock-in for our young people, which is going to be the boys first, and then we're going to do the girls. So we have special speakers coming in the month of April, the end of April, that will be addressing the needs, not just for the young men and women, our students in high school. Yes, go ahead. The Boys and Girls Club is, um, first of all, it's phenomenal. I think it's an excellent resource for young people. So like before school, if they need a place to go for games, activities, supervision, they have a lot of that there. They also have like leadership clubs there. They help with homework. They feed your children. And I wish there was somebody on. I, I will, may have to post them on here. Um, and it's not that expensive. They, I, I know that a lot of the facilities will pick your children up from school and drop them back off to um, the Boys and Girls Club. So please Google it. Please Google them. Um, phenomenal group. So we'll be partnering with them. The health department will be partnering with them um, and right as we are right now. And also mental health is a very big issue out here. And we're bringing out experts. It's not going to just be us talking. It's going to be experts talking in the realm of traumas, talking in the realm of depression and anxiety, talking in the realm of those that need um, tips on self-care. And so stay tuned. We, we, we're out here for you. That's that. This is what we're called. It's called a time to heal focus on the family series. And um, that's, that's what we're doing. So back to you, Chef Brown. I guess the question was, where is the boys? Oh, the boys. So it's right here on our, what is it? It's not far from here. It is right. You know where Edgewood Elementary School is? It's right next door. It's tucked back there. Across. Yes, it is. That's the Edgewood Boys and Girls Club. I thought it was that one are you talking about the one in Edgewood, right? No, you know what? That one is the church behind the gas station. Oh, she's talking about um, Rooted Bible. Rooted Bible. No, no, it's 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 right up the street here. It's right up the street off of Foreign Court. There you go. There you go. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. And how is how is this particular recipe? How does everyone like this one? Is the rice supposed to go with this chicken? Mm -hmm. There's some rice with this chicken. If anybody wants some rice. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Somebody said, I kept saying this. Thank you. We're going to warm this up a little bit. Okay. And we'll add it with it. Thank you. Is it too bland for you? Is it too bland? No, but if you just, just hold tight, you got you. And then just mm -hmm. chicken by itself. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Oh.
Wow, you guys are watching Chef Brown. Put some um, lemon fat. We have some. I mean, I'm orange fat. We have some repeat visitors to our events. Hello. And uh, I guess you your name. Hi, I'm, my name is Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Michelle. And I was a um, video chat person first of all, but I'm it's really enjoying so being out turn because I've been in the house for two years. So this has been a wonderful experience and an icebreaker to come back out. I'm ready to come back again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And let me get someone else to let us know how they're enjoying the food. It's been a pleasure being here. Also. It was, um, we're enjoying Chef Brown um, cooking. She's giving us a lot of tips on how to cook our food, how to prepare our food, and how to um, expand it to another level. She says, whatever you, the you want to add to her recipes, you can do that. And it's been very tasty. We're now having the chicken and rice, and it's very flavorful, and it's very healthy for us. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Anyone want to just say hi and how you're enjoying the meal? Can they see you? No, they can't see you. Hello. Thank you. So I think that Chef Brown is almost finished prepping. Yes, I am. I am. Remember to stay tuned because we have a game at the end and you can win a prize. That's actually a pasta. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are you scalping a little bit? Oh, R Z O. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I'm squeezing. So I put the orange zest in here now. So we've given this, infusing it with some citrus. The only difference is um, versus using um, orange juice. And uh, this is just freshness and you don't have the additional preservatives. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, once again, budget conscious and you have orange juice, um, you can buy orange zest peel and dehydrated peel. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll show it to you in a second. And see, quick, easy, healthy, simple meals and prep time. Okay, and what I'm, um, what Tracy, yes, is, is helping, assisting me with, she's being a sous chef, but she don't have her apron. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was supposed to be a sous chef, and I had to describe okay. I'm sorry. So, okay, so, now, this dish is ready. So, it has bay leaves, and thyme, um, rosemary, orange zest, orange, fresh orange, garlic, onion. Onions and red peppers, and you can peppers in here as well, too. Now, what Tracy is preparing is a stuffed sweet potato. Simply, simply delicious. So once again, you have your sweet potato, your chili sweet potato, stuffed sweet potato. And if you want to make this a complete meal, all you have to do is add some spinach to it. All right? You don't have the recipe to this one. <laughs> you do not. This is an extra bonus. <laughs> all right? So um, it's very healthy, a little fat because it has cheese on it. But what you do, you can either put the uh, sweet potato in there. I did it in the microwave. I'm not a microwave fan. But we put it in the microwave, microwave it to it was tender. 
we didn't scoop the flesh out, but you can scoop the flesh out. You put the uh, ground turkey. So here we go, taking ingredients over and making another dish. Your ground turkey, we took the um, diced tomatoes, mixed it in with a little bit of chili pepper and cumin, and then garnish it with some cheese and put it in the oven. We have another question. Mm -hmm. Where can you buy the Ozark? Um, any Walmart, Wegmans, yes, okay. and that's just another. Um, you can use orzo. Um, you can also use quinoa. Um, you know, get away from the rice, 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 rice. Okay, if you do the rice, you, um, you can do wild rice. Or if you want to use rice, infuse it with flavors. Put some herbs in there, like some parsley, some thyme, some basil, and then put some carrots and some vegetables in there. Uh, once again, that's helping with your vegetable intake. Mm -hmm. I got an apron. Bingo! Just while I, what I did is put the water in, I bring the water up to temperature, boil it. I had a little bit of vegetable stock that I put in there, and then I put the rice in there, and then I turn the temperature, I mean the pasta in there, turn the temperature down, and just let it cook. It doesn't take that long, maybe 15 minutes. So once again, this is you know another three to four hour process, but I know we're not gonna have time either for one of them, so I'm not sure. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um we don't have time to cook it. So I'm gonna clean up now. So I'm gonna clean up. Is there any questions? But you saw you how we just had basic ingredients, and you can take those ingredients and recreate and make another dish. Um and very inexpensive. Just a couple of pointers. When you go to the market, go to the market with a shopping list. Never go empty handed because you find yourself spending way more than what you really need. Um, what else I was going to say? When when we go to the market, and this is my little grocery cart right here I use for my display. Okay. So when we go to the market, Learn how to use your grocery cart for your health because your grocery cart can be the most contaminated in what you're doing with the items. So all of your items should be separated in the grocery cart. Your chemicals should be in one area. All of your poultry should be in another designated area your lean meat, and your vegetables. You should not be taking all of your items and just compiling it into them, you know, going through the market and just putting the items in there. When you shop at the market, when we walk in, we visually walk in and we see the fresh produce. That should be the last item that you shop for. Okay. Reason why is temperature. It's regulated by temperature. Your meats and your vegetables and your frozen food is regulated by temperature. So if you have to go down the aisle and purchase any dry goods, your chemicals, those are the first things that you should purchase, I mean, put in your grocery cart. Once you leave there, you go to the frozen um, area. The frozen area, then you go to the meat, and then you go to your fresh produce and into the line and purchase your items. When you go home, it's a reversal. All of the items, your fresh produce is out first, your, uh, um, your meat, your frozen, and then your dry goods and your chemicals is last. Because if you're shopping and you're getting all this food that's on temperature, that's regulated by either um, ice or some type of cool temperature, and you're walking through the, the market, that temperature is dropping. And by the time you get home. Um, we got another text message from somebody watching. Uh -huh. And they said, can you repeat about the oils? The about olive oils, the extra olive oil. They wanted to know again about, about the just the olive oil yes. or the oil in general. Just the oil, just what you said about the different oils. Okay, so the different oils, all of them have what we call smoke temperature. Okay, so it's they can only be utilized for a certain amount of heat. So like your coconut oil, your vegetable oil, your peanut oil, your grapeseed oil, your safflower, all those can be used for high temperature. Your ghee butter can be used for high temperature. Your pomace is your only level of virgin, I mean, the pomace is your only level of olive oil that can be used for frying. 
Yes, um, extra virgin olive oil should be used only for garnishing or making dressing, salad dressing. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, I like to cook um, beans mm -hmm. in crock pot. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, um, do you ever cook beans? Do you have any you can cook any or meal or? in the crock pot. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, like beans, do you have any particular like a bean yeah. that you might recommend or? All of, them. All, of them. <laughs> All of them. All of them. All um, of them. The other day, I did a white cheddar, um, a white kidney cheddar um, bean soup. Okay, and you just put it in. You let it cook three to four hours. Afterwards, you take it out. You take your immersion blender and puree it up. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Let's give her a hand. So those of you that are watching, um, get prepared for the Cahoots game. Felicia will announce when it's ready to start. Everyone that will um, that's a part of it, the person that wins may 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 receive a gift. Will receive a gift. Will receive a gift. Excuse me. And also, we want to also before we go is let everyone know that everybody that's here today that didn't know that you you, you stay to the end. Each one of you are getting a four quart crock pot from the health department. And the recipes that are were cooked today are in the bag. We also have some other health resources in there for as far as diabetes, low blood sugar, high blood sugar, Megan's Place, and um, the dentistry that is in Edgewood that is from the Harford County Health Department. Um, the, uh, there's a, a little a pen in there from One North Maine. Those, that's for pregnant women and their children that just opened up this past summer or fall. So um, we're just thankful that you came and we're hoping that the next time you hear that we have an event that you sign up right away because you just never know what you might get from us. Okay, so get ready for the game. Here it is. Everybody ready? Get your phones out. So everybody get ready for the cahoots and those of you that registered will have uh we will send an email for you to pick up your crock pot. Okay. Real quick, this is your stuffed sweet potato. I'm not going to start up there. I'll see it. Here's the pen. Here's the pen. Here's the pen. Here's the pen. Here's the pen.
We hope that each one of you. Okay. I know that was so exciting. We hope that each one of you had a great time with us today. We finished about 15 minutes early, but listen, the resources that we um, have available, well, um, you can either call us or we can have the flyers on our Minority Health page. For those of you that um, registered er, um, in advance and stayed to the end, we'll see your name on there as well, and you will receive your Crock-Pot. But congratulations to our winner, Joyce. That was excellent. And we want to just say thank you and goodbye from all of us out here at Village of Lakeview. Thank you. Chef Brown, you want to wave? Bye. Tracy, you want to wave? They can see you. Thank you, Health Department. Yes, thank you for joining us. And someone's on here saying, congratulations, Joyce. <laughs> Have a great Saturday and a great wake weekend and be safe. Thank you. You know what was crazy? I did not.